Now, let's get reaction from the bond market. Chip Huey, Truist Advisory Services Managing Director of Fixed Income, joins us now. Chip, what are you seeing with regard to the uh, bond market, the twos and tens, et cetera? What's your view? Yeah, I think that in looking at the reaction that this is this is largely in line with expectations that there would that the Fed would move forward with the 25 basis point uh, hike and uh, and pretty clearly signal that it is going to move to a, a more of a wait and see mode. And so you are you are seeing a reaction in, in yields currently coming down uh, in response to removing the probability of an additional hike um, in, uh, in at the June meeting. Uh, but we do think that it's very likely that uh, that this signals uh, the, the end of this uh, hiking cycle, uh, except ex especially if we see inflation continue to cooperate between now and June. Chip, what do you think of the language, the change in language, I should, I should say, that did omit what they had initially signaled, which was more rate hikes? And is it too early? I know you were saying it's more likely that maybe the Fed will pause here, but is it too early to rule out a rate hike in June? Yes, I think it's too early to completely rule one out. I think that the, the Fed is simply trying to build in some policy flexibility with that kind of language so to move into a true data dependent mode. Uh, there are signals that uh, that you know, inflation is starting to cooperate a bit more, wage pressure uh, potentially cooling. This gives the Fed a little bit of leeway into get it back into a holding pattern, allow the data to, to come to Fed officials and then make a determination at that time if it, if it is appropriate. But given what we've seen over the course of the past six weeks, uh, that teed up a, a potential more, more firm signal that uh, a pause may be appropriate. So, Chip, one of the things that we notice on days like today is there's uh, sure there's an initial market reaction, but it's usually muted uh, nowadays uh, at the time of the announcement, because for years now we've had press conferences, which we didn't have previously. And right. so you tend to see the market move more once the press conference occurs. Now, you've said that you don't think uh, that Powell will telegraph the start of an all out pause. What are you looking for Powell, Chairman Powell, to telegraph during today's press conference? Yeah, I think that today is really all about the press conference in order to gauge how the Fed thinks it's going to move forward. So I do think that is going to is going to signal a very data dependent approach. Uh, and uh, and to allow to build in for, you know, to that uh, policy as much policy flexibility as possible, and I think that you'll hear that uh, in in uh, in the uh, chair Powell's comments. I also think that they're likely to acknowledge the fact that lending standards do continue to tighten. Um, they don't really know what the impact of that ultimately will be on the economy. It's likely to be at least somewhat negative, and so that is something that I think that they will highlight as as worth monitoring. I think that his comments will cover that. Chip, what about the fact that is. Everyone was on board. There was no dissent. There was a lot of talk heading into this and maybe Goolsby would be the one to dissent given the turmoil that we've seen in the banking sector. But what do you think about everyone being OK with it? Right. I think the fact that it came with a, a, a 25 basis point hike that we came into today, the market was priced in a 90 percent probability. Right. The market was given giving the uh, Fed officials the green light to move forward with this with this hike, given that inflation still remains too high. We've, and, uh, and again, wage pressure needs to continue to cool through the labor market, uh, potentially softening. So I think that the fact that the market priced that in so fully allowed them to move forward. And I think that any potential voters that were thinking that they would like to potentially pause already uh, were comforted by the fact that the language really does seem to lay out a case to move into a full data dependent mode and not guarantee that, that hikes are going to continue ad nauseum from here. So, Chip, I got to ask you about you, you talk about the data, right? And we've had some data, more data come in from the last meeting between then and now. And often CPI and, and, and just inflation targets can be a little bit of a lagging indicator in terms of the impact of these rate cuts uh, going forward. Now, there has been talk about a potential pause from here. Now, you've said you and, and some voices are expecting the Fed to cut rates this year. What's your view on the expectations around that? Do you think the market is getting yeah. it right or are they incorrect? Yeah, we actually disagree a little bit with what the market is pricing in, which is a pretty uh, swift pivot into cuts You know, by the end of the year. We think that that actually the Fed is going to be very hesitant given the scar tissue that's kind of built up uh, over the past year to 18 months with how high inflation has, has gone, how much further progress needs to be made on that front. We think the Fed is going to wait for a very clear signal that inflation is cooperating, is carving a consistent 
path lower. So the idea that the Fed will quickly pivot into cut mode, that's that's not our base case. Our expectation is that the Fed will uh, continue to hold the Fed funds rate at these restrictive levels for some time. And there's still a lot more validation that's needed going forward uh, before saying, OK, you know, now is time uh, to move into cut. So we, we anticipate the Fed funds rate to stay at these restrictive levels, really, uh, for the balance of the year. Chip, if you got to pick one, there's certainly a number of econ data points that are set to be released between now and the next Fed meeting. What's the most important release that you will be watching? Yeah, I think that I think we want to see uh, initial claims to see to see if there's any early signals from the labor market that the impact of what the Fed has done continues to will continue to weigh on the economy. We know that the Fed policy does work with a significant lag. We think that the impact is going to continue to unfold and build throughout the rest of throughout the rest of uh, of this year. So I think that that is that is worth watching and certainly the the most the most important because it was inflation data, right? That that uh, really encouraged the Fed to go on such an aggressive uh, rate hike campaign. So that is going to be critical to watch between now and June. Does that trend continue to cool, uh, which would which would add to comfort that perhaps a pause, a longer term pause at these levels is appropriate. So I think between inflation and jobs, right, right in right into the wheelhouse of the Fed's mandate, I think is what we need to be watching. Chip, I got to ask you this question. If you had Fed Chair Jay Powell's ear, what would your advice be uh, going into not just the presser, but the next meeting, June? Yeah, I think I think the best thing to do at this point is to be data dependent. I, I think that the the Fed ha had to respond very aggressively to inflation over the course of the past year, and they and they have done that. I think that the recent stresses that we've seen uh, in, in certain parts of the banking sector, for instance, uh, the fact that we have seen a little bit of weakening on the infl on the inflation side and on, on in wage pressure, for instance, we've seen inflation expectations come way down, right? And we have seen uh, expectations of recession tick up. I think that moving to a truly data dependent mode. And if we do see economic activity continue to slow, then that then staying data dependent will allow the Fed to really formulate appropriate uh, appropriate policy, allow these restrict the restrictive policy settings that we're at now to continue to to cool inflation. So I think the move to a more data dependent type language makes a lot of sense. Certainly one of the things that was reiterated in the statement today. Chip, thanks so much for joining us.